again, once again, I repeat myself, read your Bible, folks, read your Bible. But look for the deeper meaning. And if you got a Bible with good footnotes, a lot of what I'm talking about tonight will be in the footnotes. Oh, and by the way, I used to have a sign on the doors, read your Bible. Well, St. Nicholas didn't like that papered uh, signs, so St. Nicholas went out and had them made out of brass. So uh, I don't know if you could read that online, but read your Bible. Look for the deeper meaning. Well, tonight's scripture is all full of it. The first reading from Genesis. And uh, many of you know this, and I'll make it quick. Adam and Eve are not two people. It, they're us. Because the Word of God is about us. It's not about people who just lived 2,000 years ago or longer. In the Hebrew, Adam is Adam. It's a small a. It means humankind. It means everybody. We turned it with a capital A into a man's name. Eve, as you heard in the reading, means mother of the living. It's Ev. We turned it into a proper name, Eve. But it's not about two people. Now, we've done that others, uh, in other ways. Think about some of the ladies' names. Daisy or Rose. They're names of humans. They're also flowers. Or even you call your sweetie honey. Are you talking about your sweetie? Or are you talking about the, 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 the substance that bees produce? Well, that's today's reading. Now, Adam and Eve, again, represent us. And we all participate in that sin, which is the refusal to follow God's ways. That's what this is about. And if you've been around, you know I don't like the word original sin because it gives the impression that Adam and Eve thought of it and did it first, and then we get shafted with their mistake. It means from our origins, original origins, that we have inherited a weakened human nature and we don't want to serve anybody but ourselves. They tell me that young babies, after they learn mommy and daddy, the next word they learn is no. And that's what we say to God. That's what the story of Genesis is all about. Adam and Eve said, no, I, we won't follow God's ways. We participate in that. Now, according to our belief in our doctrine, Mary did not. The only reference in the gospel about Mary and this feast is that the angel greeted her with hail full of grace. It is that those few words that our doctrine is based on because if Mary is full of grace she can't have any sin if you have a glass full of water and it's really full you can't add anything else to it and that's what we believe Mary was privileged to receive from God as I said earlier in the light of the death and resurrection of Jesus even years before he actually died and rose from the dead. So we come together tonight. We honor Mary, of course, but then we seek to imitate her. So, the gospel. What's the, some of the deeper meanings of the gospel? I want to touch on just two of them quickly. Number one, if you can imagine you're Mary, as I said, 13, 14, maybe 15 years old. And the angel appears to her and says, you know, she's going to have a child and so on. And she said, yes, let it be done to me according to your word. How do we handle the change of plans? She obviously didn't plan this. And obviously she had other plans. But this one really abruptly changed everything in her life. And she said, let it be done to me as you say. How do you handle the change of plans? And I might be talking about just the little things. Every morning we get up and we have a mental agenda of what we want to get done that day. Many times it doesn't happen because somebody else has some other plans for us. 
How do we handle that? Are we able to say, let it be done to me as you say? Or do we get all upset and so on? And those are just the little things. But sometimes our life is drastically changed by the, by the, the, the different situations that face us. You go to the doctor and they diagnose you or a loved one with a very serious illness. Wow, that's a change of plans, isn't it? Or a clo somebody close to you suddenly dies. Or maybe you have some sudden financial or other relationship uh, situations. How do you handle that? I don't believe God sends them to us, but we can respond to them in the way that Mary responded, let it be done to me as you say. To me, that's a tremendous lesson because it's a lesson that's very, very hard to learn. And the second lesson that I get from Mary tonight, and I, I talk about, I think about this all frequently as I think about Mary. In the day's gospel, you know the story, but the angel almost oh, by the way, says, Elizabeth, your kinswoman, she was elderly, is with child in her old age. She's in her sixth month. Unfortunately, the gospel ends too soon because as soon as Mary said, be it done unto me according to your word, and the angel left her, the very next verse says, and then Mary immediately proceeded in haste to go and help Elizabeth. Nobody asked her. Nobody said she should, but she saw a need and she responded. To me, that's a tremendous lesson. Because what do we do when we see somebody in need? I, ho I hope sometimes we do respond, but don't we sometimes look the other way or we say, that's not my problem, let somebody else handle it? But Mary saw a need, and she responded. Again, nobody had to ask her. Nobody had to tell her. Nobody had to beg. She just did it. That is a tremendous act of charity. And that's what we're called to imitate. Because Mary does not want our admiration. She wants our imitation. So those two things again. How do you handle change in your life, interruptions? How do you handle when somebody is in need? We're challenged to be like Mary and respond.